We'll call this meeting of the Committee of the Whole to order at 6.33. Roll call, please. Mrs. Allen. Here. Mayor Murphy. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Doherty. Here. Mr. Burchett. Here. Mrs. Witt. Here. Ms. Marcus. Here. Uh, we have the approval of the minutes for the Committee of the Whole meeting for June 22nd. Hearing no changes to comments, we'll approve those as they are. Hearing none, they are approved. Uh, finance Director. Finance has no report this evening. Thank you, Ms. Martins. Okay. City Manager. The only thing I would like to say is uh, what um, Mrs. Witt spoke on earlier. If any questions come in on aggregation, and I've shared this with staff in the staff meetings, you can send them to me, and I'll handle and explain them in further detail. Uh, for those of you that have received it, you've seen all the jurisdiction logos, both on the actual letter that was mailed, or I mean on the envelope that was mailed, as well as the letter inside. So hopefully that's bringing some comfort to folks. But but again, if any questions come up, don't hesitate them to, to send them my way. Questions have been coming for a while online, and I've given okay. them some information on that. My letter just came today. I haven't even opened it yet. Okay. But, but again, uh, the end goal here is you, you can save almost half, like Shirley's saying, you do mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, but if there's any detailed questions or anything online, you can tell them to, to reach out to me and I'll, I'll address them. Most of the thing right now is people are anxious as to whether or not they're, they themselves are going to get it. Because I had like, I sent you an email about it, questions about someone in Oakwood wanted to know if they were going to get it. Someone in Washington right. Township wanted to know if they were going to get it. Somebody in Miami Township. So, um... I actually received a phone call from the assistant superintendent at West Carrollton Schools saying she lives in Oakwood and, and why are they not getting it? And I said, well, you need to speak to the Oakwood city manager. But at the end of the day, it's because there are a group of cities <clears throat> that are part of GovTech and MVCC, and then there's a larger pool that's actually participating in the electric aggregation. Um, but we'll also, at some point, I'll send something out on whether council wants to consider uh, gas aggregation as well. It doesn't fluctuate as much, and there's not a guaranteed uh, savings as there is to the utility or to the electric side. But if you want to have a discussion on it, we can do that. I know that Jay with MVCC is going to get started on that relatively soon. So. Yeah, it'd be nice to have that looked in. I don't, the only thing I have gas on turned on for right now is a hot water tank, and it's forty-four dollars a month to run the hot water tank. Run one hot water tank with only one person using it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, it's more than my electric bill. <laughs> but most of the, like I said, most of the um, question I've got is, am I going to get it? And if not, why? And this is supposed to be, if everything continues to run smoothly, and it has, uh, it would be August and the September billing is when they would actually see the change. Yeah, well, people are anxiously awaiting it from what I've heard. I've had some fun conversations on it, too. Is the letter going out to businesses, too? It is, I, and I apologize, Mary, I don't have that uh, in front of me. It was under a certain load that if they qualify, then, yes, it goes out to. So probably most of our small businesses will be receiving it. In fact, okay. the city has received it, and we believe it's probably for our traffic lights and other things. We've um, Kim gave me seven or eight notifications uh, two days ago that had come in, and they were just referencing interchanges without an address and this, that, and, and possibly some of our smaller facilities mm -hmm. might end up benefiting as well. So, because um, as you know, we, we run electric everywhere. So, oh, yeah. Uh, a few of our sites will receive the same benefit. I guess some thought they all would. Uh, I don't know about no. the capacity, like at this location or the firehouses. We'll have to check on that. Those, we have not I gotten those. Not. We haven't gotten those notifications. It had yet, to be under so. a certain. Yeah, and I don't have that. It had to be under a certain amount that certain they used something. a month. Okay. Yeah. Each but month. It, and it may qualify. I, I just don't have that number in front of me right now. Do you have anything else? So that's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mayor. I have no report. Thank you, Law Director. Thank you. Um, I have one request. That's for an executive session for matters pertaining to compensation of public officials. Uh, and the request is for that executive session to occur before the business section of this agenda. I'll make that motion as directed by the law director. Roll call, please. <laughs> Mrs. Allen? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Darney? Yes. Mr. Burchett? Yes. Ms. Marcus? Yes. Uh, Clerk Council. 
Um, I just wanted to let council know I'll be out of the office next Monday through Thursday, um, July 17th through the 20th to um, go to the Ohio Municipal Clerks Conference. And thank you to council for the opportunity to allow me to attend. And that's all I got. All right, thank you. Okay, so the next thing is business. So we'll have our executive session now. So, do we need to no, okay. I'm leaving everything. I'm taking my phone because it's Okay, because it's on. Okay, yeah, that's the only thing I'm doing. Other than, do we have a list of that? Martina, do you have you have the information? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay.
Stop to take your chair. No, you can. Go right ahead. Oh. You call this meeting back to order at 701. We're going to business. The property and liability insurance renewal. Uh, yes, I'll be handling that for finance. Essentially, this is an annual housekeeping keeping item. Uh, we have to do this every July, and the renewal price came in at $208,092. This is a 9.65% increase over last year. Uh, the last year's premium was $189,783. However, uh, PEP, who we get our insurance, which is a, a, entity, a large entity pool with over 500 municipalities, they are, uh, for the first time, handing out a member loyalty credit in the amount of $8,727. That brings the expected cost to one thousand, or I'm sorry, $199,365, which if you do the math is only about a 5% increase. And uh, when we did the budget, when we prepared the budget for 2023, uh, the finance director included about a 15% increase because we just didn't really know where it was going to go, especially with some of the cybersecurity concerns that are out there. And that has generated uh, a lot of the increase. So if there are any questions, I can answer them. If not, we would like legislation to be drawn uh, to allow us to go ahead and renew our uh, city insurance. I'll make a motion that we have uh, legislation drawn up to renew our insurance. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Mr. Burchett? Yes. Mr. Darty? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mrs. Allen? Yes. Ms. Marcus? Yes. The next item, the Wright Sea Plan Sculpture Donation. Yes, I am tag teaming this with uh, Councilman Miller. Um, <clears throat> essentially, from the city's perspective, uh, and I'll let Dave talk more specifically about the association uh, donating it and why we're getting it, but for us to be able to ensure the structure. Uh, we need to have some kind of proof that we accepted the donation. And then we'll also need to make sure, and I know our building maintenance and street folks are doing a good job on this, we'll need to make sure that it is inspected and that it has a permit. Uh, that is what our insurance company has told us. Other than that, we, we get that done. they will have no problem in ensuring the structure. At this point, I'll hand it over to Dave if you want to talk a little bit about the donation, Dave. Sure. Just real briefly, the Wright Seaplane Base Club, which I'm a member of, uh, the goal is to just keep the history of the Wright Brothers alive, uh, and specifically the seaplane part of it, which doesn't get a lot of publicity. And from uh, 1912 to 1914, Orville Wright did over 100 uh, seaplane tests right out here in Moraine at the bend of the river where they'd go either north, south, or east, west. So one goal the clubs always had was to come up with a uh, replica uh, plane, and we wanted to donate one to the city of West Carrollton and one to the city of Moraine. So the first one is just about done, should be done within the month, and it's um, six foot wing, wingspan, it's aluminum, we want to mount it on a 20 foot pole and donate it to the city, with the city accepting that. Where would we put this? We wanted to keep it somewhat close to the river, so our, our goal is to put it in the green space, uh, if you picture going over the uh, Main Street Bridge over I-75 and over the river. Uh, first Street on the left is Elter, Second Street on the left is Beach Grove. So all that green space in between where the bike path is, we'd like to put it there. And uh, I can do a more formal presentation later on down the road if, if this is accepted. Sounds but I'd like to relocate the Moraine Historical Marker for the Wright Seaplane Base, which is currently right on the edge of the bridge <laughs> and very hard to get to. I'd like to relocate that in that green space. And then there's some other ideas for some historical uh, signage and whatever in that green space. So it could turn out to be a nice little historical oh, yeah. park if that, that could be something we'll discuss down the road as well. I just where is that sculpted from? Hmm? What kind of material do they use to sculpt? It's aluminum. It, and it's been primarily manufactured by a moraine company, mm -hmm. uh, Bront Manufacturing. Good. But putting it there, could it get damaged? 
it can get damaged anywhere, anywhere. but our goal well, was to put it 20 here, feet up. You have the police department. Yeah. Well, but surely it's it, um, it's Terry. Terry. Yeah, yeah, Terry. It's uh, 20. Sure it's going to be 20 feet up in the yeah. air. Oh, okay. So the end goal is the key. Of course, they can yeah. shoot it. <laughs> well, I would hope not, but aluminum. Let, I was not, just thinking. I was there, thinking Shirley. more on the ground, and no, you know, kids yeah. climbing on it or whatever, and could it be damaged right there? There would be right. a base plaque, right, Dave? Yeah, there'll be a plaque well, added to it. Like 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 yeah. 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 Do we need to provide a foundation or base or anything for it? Our our streets and building maintenance crew are taking care of that now. Uh, they picked out a pole. It's one that we already had laying over the street department. And uh, they're working now on how deep the concrete foundation would need to be, where it would need to be set. So they've been doing some really good work on that. It would be wind oh, resistant for these 50 mile an hour winds that we sometimes get. It is, but the unique thing about it, we planned it so that it's going to be installed on top of this pole and it can actually be removed somewhat fast. I mean, with a lift, of course. <laughs> but if we had a once in a century um, tornado. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, a hurricane event like we had 15 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. If it's one of those things, uh, it's made so that it can be removed. Not okay. just for a storm, but or if the city in the future decides we're going to do something with that green space, it right. can be moved somewhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we have enough warning. And yes, the, the total, we have enough warning, yeah. And, Dave, <laughs> am I correct? The total yeah. weight's about 100 pounds, 90 yes. to 100 pounds. Oh, that's yeah. not heavy. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so what we need at this point is a motion, motion to approve forward to accept it. The legislation, yes, to accept the donation. Uh, I'll make a motion that we have legislation prepared to accept the donation of the Wright Seaplane Sculpture. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mrs. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Burchett? Yes. Ms. Marcus? Yes. Hey, Jeanette, if I may also add, we, um, once we get it installed, we've set a date for Saturday, September 9th at 10 a.m. for a dedication with a rain date two weeks later. So I'll have more information on that later. September 9th. What's yep. that? Read it off. A Saturday. <laughs> Saturday morning. Okay. Yeah. I'll get more info on that later. Okay, so we'll move on to the next item, the CRC recommended charter revisions discussion. Yes, yeah, so the uh, Charter Review Commission uh, met, and before you are draft resolutions incorporating their recommendations, um, pursuant to Charter Section 10.5, Council quote, may take such action as it deems warranted with respect to such recommendations. So basically, you can accept all of the recommendations and move all of those resolutions forward to the July 27th meeting so that they can be placed on the November ballot. You can vote to move some of them forward. You can vote to modify them. So what I would suggest is that you have a discussion with respect to each one of those uh, draft resolutions. The first one is 3.5 with regard to council salaries. And then after your discussion, what we would need is the appropriate motions and votes as to how council would like to move forward with respect to each of these individually. Okay, um, I can take it up that uh, to tell the people that anyone listening that this is being put on the ballot because council here has not had a, well, there's never been a race. The city was put in in 1965 and council is still at the same pay that it was in 1965. Council has never received a raise, so what this says is, um, uh, it's not going up really high, but it is giving council at least enough for the meetings that we have, which I know people don't, they just see some of our meetings and there are a lot more meetings that we go to. Um, anybody else? Uh, yes, this is not for the council as you see it today because anyone in office cannot benefit from a raise. <clears throat> Those of us that will be reelected, hopefully in November, when we take office in January, yes, we would be eligible. But the uh, community, or, um, 
council at large and the mayor would not be eligible for two more years. But we're, we want to put this in place for the councils to come. Um, as Terry said, this, the council has not had a raise since the very first council, 1965. Um, what people don't realize is that they see council as just sitting up here for half hour. They don't know that we go to all the open houses, all the ribbon cuttings. We spend, um, when we hired a city manager, we spent about five days on that process and we got lunch, which was okay. Like I told Mike, I'm, I'm good with lunch. <laughs> but none of us took the job for money. We, but we will need to educate the public and that will be our job to convince you that are listening that do it for the city and not for, for the council here, although, like I said, some of us will benefit. Um, there was one, one more important thing that, that we it's should... The council coming up that might... Right, that will benefit. people that might, would like to get on council in the future. True. And this does not affect taxes in any way. At all. Way. That, was, that was the yes. main thing. Yeah, taxes, no tax increases. It will not be any tax increases. So support us in this, and we'll be out in the community knocking on your door pretty soon. Thank you. Now, do we need to discuss that we want to make a change to? Yeah, so basically what, just to review what the Salary Review Commission had uh, suggested, which is in the council packet, but what the CRC had recommended was that the base salary of council members and the mayor increase from $1,200 annually to $3,000 annually. The base salary of the mayor currently is $2,400 annually. So what they've done is made the council members and the mayors the same at $3,000 annually, or what they've suggested. Um, in addition, uh, council members and the mayors receive uh, currently receive $20, $20 excuse me, for each regular council meeting, they've recommended increasing that, that to $57 uh, for the regular council meeting and each uh, committee for the whole meeting attended, not to exceed a total of $228 per month. In addition, the mayor and deputy mayor will receive his additional salary. What they have suggested is to increase the sum of $25 for each pre-scheduled court session to $100 for each pre-scheduled court session and uh, not to exceed a total of $5,200 per year. And then as the charter currently reads is that council members and the mayor should not receive additional salary for attending special meetings of the council. The salaries of the council members and the mayor shall be changed only by a majority vote of electors of the city of Moraine at a special or general election. So these recommended increases from the CRC will have to go to the ballot to be approved or declined by the voters. Um, if there is a recommended change to the uh, uh, provision which provides for no additional salary for uh, council and the mayor attending special means of council, then I can revise that as long as there is at least a majority of council that uh, approves whatever that recommendation is. One other thing I'd like to put <clears throat> out there. Um, we have had two opportunities when Charter Review has come back and recommended that we put it on the ballot for us to get a raise. Twice we have said no. Once was when the city was in an economic downswing. The last time was when we, were, we needed the income tax passed and it came that they wanted to put us on the ballot and we said no. We need that income tax, so we, put, we set council <clears throat> aside. We all agreed in the best interest of the city, we needed the tax increase more than council needed to raise. So obviously none of us are in this for the money. Thank you. There's that other part I don't think you've mentioned yet about the $50. Yeah, so yeah. if there is a uh, motion to move forward with this, what we would need is a motion to move forward with the uh, salary increases as recommended by the CRC uh, and to move forward with a recommendation that the language with respect to special meetings of council 
be amended to provide for additional salary for council members and the mayor of $50 per special meeting uh, with regard to special meetings only that involve uh, budget purposes, personnel hiring purposes, or workshops, and that would be capped at no more than eight special uh, meetings per year. I'll make a motion that we <coughs> adopt these changes and that we uh, change the language to reflect the $50 special meetings per the law director. So I'll make that motion. I'd like you mean to put it to the next regular council meeting? To put it forward to the next regular council meeting, and yes. then at the next regular council meeting, in order to move that forward to the ballot, we would need five votes of council to move that forward. Right. Tonight, we just need four votes to move it forward to the next regular council meeting. I'd like to note that that $50, those meetings that we're talking about for that, like our budget meeting can run six to eight hours, and council norm right now does not get paid for that. So these are not little half-hour meetings. Uh, anyone else have any other questions or comments? Do we, no. have, a, we have a motion? Yeah. Oh, yeah sure. Sure. Motion. Motion. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Roll call, please. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Mr. Burchett? Yes. Mr. Jardy? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mrs. Allen? Yes. Ms. Marcus? Yes. Uh, that went quick. <laughs> the next one is the Axela Software Update Community Development. Oh, wait a minute. That was only one oh, of them. Oh, no, them. that's one of the five. I'm sorry. I'm losing track here. <laughs> So I believe the next uh, proposed amendment to the charter is section 3.10 annual audit. Uh, the current language reads during those years in which the state of Ohio makes an audit of the affairs of the city, such audit in council's discretion shall be accepted as valid. In such years and other years, council may approve an audit by a certified public accountant. The proposed language from the Charter Review Commission would strike that language in its entirety and replace it with the following. An annual financial audit shall be performed by either the state of Ohio or an independent public accounting firm. The city may disagree with the comments or citations made by the auditors and provide a written response. My understanding is that recommendation came from, from the finance department in order to reflect what actually occurs uh, since this appears to be outdated language in the current charter. Um, if the clerk of council would like to add anything additional to that, uh, that's my understanding as to the, the proposed rationale. I make a motion that we um, have this taken to the next council meeting for a vote uh, with the new language put in. As proposed by the Charter Review As Commission? As proposed by the, the Charter Review Commission. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mrs. Allen? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Darty? Yes. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Mr. Burchett? Yes. Ms. Marcus? Yes. All right, I've lost my place here. Uh, the next one is uh, Resolution 5.8. So, Section 5.8 regards absence or disability of the city manager. The current language reads, excuse me, to perform the duties in the city manager's temporary absence or disability, the city manager may designate by letter by with the clerk of council a qualified administrative officer of the city. In the event the city manager fails to make such designation, council by resolution shall appoint an administrative officer of the city to perform the duties of the city manager until the city manager shall return or until the disability ceases. In the event that the city manager shall be absent, he or she shall notify all administrative, I'm sorry, this is the proposed uh, language to replace that from the CRC. In the event that the city manager shall be absent, he or she shall notify all administrative positions and counsel by electronic means. He, she shall designate a qualified administrative officer to perform the duties of the city manager until the city manager's return. In the event that the city manager becomes unable, unable to perform their duties due to illness or disability, council will convene to appoint by resolution a city manager in the interim. Uh, the rationale for that was to clarify the procedure to appoint a qualified city officer to perform the additional duties of the city manager when the city manager is temporarily, temporarily absent uh, to update the language basically in, indicating that the city manager is to 
uh, designate that uh, temporary uh, city manager by letter uh, to indicate that should be done by electronic means to basically, uh, I mean, that's how we do things nowadays, basically. Uh, this was written, I think, I believe in 1965, so that was uh, the rationale for that. There is an alternative recommendation that does not come from the CRC, which reflects current practice, um, and the difference between that is in the second sentence. The CRC recommended he, she shall designate a qualified administrative officer to perform the duties of the city manager until the city manager's return. The alternative before you to that is he, she may designate a qualified administrative officer to perform the duties of the city manager until the city manager's return. So it's the difference between shall and may. May is the current practice, is my understanding. So council can have a discussion as to uh, which uh, version they, if any, would like to move forward to the next council meeting. I think um, leaving it as it is, but it has to be changed because of the electronic. Mm -hmm. That uh, so the new one just would take that out, the electronic, <clears throat> and leave it as may. That way, it's not a directive that he has to even for a half day on, on one day. So. I make a motion that we leave it uh, as is May. So let me read so that the record's clear. What you're proposing is that the current Section 5.8 be stricken in its entirety and replaced with the following. In the event that the city manager shall be absent, he or she shall notify all administrative positions and counsel by electronic means. He, she may designate a qualified administrative officer to perform the duties of the city manager until the city manager's return. In the event that the city manager becomes unable, unable to perform their duties due to illness or disability, council will convene to appoint by resolution a city manager in the interim. Okay, we did, ha we did have a discussion. Terry and I convened. Would we have to convene in person or could we convene over the phone? You'd have to convene in person because it says you have to appoint by resolution and you can only do that in person. So if it was an emergency, everybody would it's, have to come here. If you would have to have a happen to me or something like that was long term. Right. Yeah, like what I yeah. addressed right. up there. You would, have to, yeah. you would have to have a quorum. So you'd have to have at least yeah. five uh, council members come five. in and vote by resolution. Okay. We just wanted to clarify yeah. that. Okay. So, yes, the motion stands with what you And did. let's hope that never happens, by the way. Right. <laughs> right. But you have to, we have to know uh, nowadays. I so know, now we I know that we would have to convene in, the, in that case. Exactly. Okay. Right. So what we're talking about, just to clarify, we're talking about version 2 on here. Version 2, which uses yes. the may designate. May. Um, yes. He and she may designate. Yes. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Mrs. Witt? Yes. Mr. Burchett? Yes. Mr. Darney? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mrs. Allen? Yes. Ms. Marcus? Yes. We go into 10.12, no, the next one. Yes. 10.12 uh, regards the annual report. Uh, the charter in section 10.12 currently reads Council shall annually publish a comprehensive financial report covering the financial status or condition of the city. Council may, from time to time, publish a comprehensive report covering the activities of the city. The proposed language from the CRC is to strike that provision in its entirety and replace it with the city shall publish an annual report covering the activities of the city. The rationale was to remove possible confusion regarding the publication of the comprehensive financial report which is submitted to the state and audited as part of the annual audit procedure and clarify the purpose of the annual report. Okay. I'll make a motion that we accept the CRC's um, revision is with the way it says for the next council meeting's vote. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mrs. Allen? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Darty? Yes. Mr. Burchett? Yes. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Ms. Marcus? Yes. And then our final one here is section 10.13, management of funds. 
Section 10.13 currently reads, Council shall have exclusive authority to determine the management and deposit of all city funds, except funds that are preempted by general law of the state of Ohio. The CRC recommendation is to strike that language and replace it with, the finance director shall provide periodic reports to the city council regarding the management and deposit of city funds. <coughs> Funds shall be deposited and invested following State of Ohio law. The rationale was to provide consistency with Section 6.4B of the Charter, which provides in pertinent part, the Director of Finance shall be the fiscal officer of the city and shall be responsible for accounting, collection, and custody of public funds and control over disbursements. Yes. Did Don submit that? I believe so. Okay. I, I wish he would have been here because I would like to know why he wants that changed. It's always worked well with council approving every everything. So All the funds. I'm mm -hmm. not comfortable changing it's, that. It's about, I, I believe, the, the reporting more than uh, giving additional authority to the finance director. But I, see, I personally see That's no reason to change it. That's not what it says. It. He's taken out, she'll have exclusive authority. You know, council she'll have. And he's saying he shall have. Okay, so wording on that, what would bring some comfort to council would be maybe leaving it like it is. Council leaving <laughs> leaving it like it is. I don't see anything wrong with the new wording. This block was your objection, Charlie? To take it away from council, that council's always that's always been. Um, and, See, and I'm and just saying it's always be worked be that way. Don't understand Why? That. I was hoping he would be here to answer that. So, and, and, and of course, we're just moving. And Donna and I talked prior meeting. to his absence, but we didn't touch on that one. But I mean, is, the finance director shall provide periodic reports to the city council regarding the management and deposit of city funds. So that's but the council shall have exclusive authority to, to determine it, the management and deposit. Deposit. Yeah. So now it we, comes to us yeah. and he asks us, is that okay? Well, We're for example, asking. now the way so an investment fund works is that we get a recommendation, just so you guys it. understand, well, we get a recommendation from our two banks that manage those funds and then uh, they'll recommend certain CT or CDs or treasury bills or whatever it may be. And then he forwards that email to me for review as well to see if I support it. He typically supports it. And then at the end of the day, uh, I say, yes, that sounds good. And he goes back and then he makes the decision working with the uh, recommendation for the bank to go ahead and, and take those dollars, like you know, take an investment and put it into a CD for a two year, another one for a three year so that we, we've got them laddered out and that they're not all coming due at a certain time. And that way we can catch higher interest rates. So that's how the process currently works. And then he provides the... Um, the Treasury Investment Board report to you, letting you know the activity that's taking place. I think that's what that clarity is. However, uh, maybe a good way to do that is to, to leave it alone, as the current policy uh, allows us to do that, and then he reports, or would it be uh, leaving the inclusion of both paragraphs? So the council piece is still there, but then it talks about how the finance director will provide those reports to you. Is that a recommendation from the charter review or from Don himself? From Don. Uh, it was, well, I'm going to let the clerk speak on that. The, the, these were suggestions submitted to Don, and after discussion with charter review, they are the ones who they voted. Moved it forward. The, so, yeah, to move it forward to council. It yeah. was a suggestion made to Don? They were made to Don, or Don made the suggestions Don, to him? Don, these last few language changes, language Don things. submitted. Um, to the Charter Review Commission, right. and then the Charter Review Commission had their discussions, well, and then they, they're and moving this language forward. Correct. Because he asked yeah. them to, to do. Current policy is is working well, so That's it's exactly. it's up it's it's up to you guys. Yeah. But again, it, I think it was trying to clear up language on uh, the finance director reporting the investments to you and sharing with you where we're at in our Treasury Investment Board. Martina, how could that, if, if they wanted more clarification than what I've given them, it, they've got to move it forward one way or the other, correct? It can't be a fill-in type process two weeks from now, right? Yeah, uh, so what I would suggest is if you're not comfortable with it, either you vote to keep it the same, 
or you vote to modify the language in some way that you feel comfortable with. And I think what uh, Mr. Davis suggested was that to leave the current language in and add the second paragraph. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I would suggest to you that either you uh, vote to not move forward or you vote to modify the language in some way that you're all in agreement with or that the majority, four of you, are in agreement with one way or the other. So we could leave the... Leave yeah. it as it is with the addition. With the addition that the finance director shall provide periodic reports, because I think those two can be read. They can't. Cons I mean, that's yeah. kind of, they yeah. kind of run. Yeah. I'd say the first line that was crossed out, keep, and then leave off the accept funds, because that says it in the last line of the new one. That fund shall be deposited and invested in following state of Ohio law. Yeah, I think that's the same, but just leave in the council shall have exclusive yeah. authority to do to put that in there so what you're suggesting is have it read council shall have exclusive authority to determine the management and deposit of city funds period right the finance director shall provide periodic reports to the city council regarding the management and deposit of city funds funds shall be deposited and invested following the state of ohio law because he already yes. provides mm -hmm. I mean, he already provides reports. The reporting I, I see no reason to take out council shall have exclusive authority. That's, I don't, I don't understand why you don't that's feel asking to take that out. Yeah, you don't feel comfortable removing that provision? No. Le leaving that language is good and just adding the second piece. like Yeah. Right. That the way Martina everything. read it, uh, that yeah. makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. So then when we just need a motion to modify it as I just read it to move it forward to the next council meeting. Okay. I'll make the motion that we modify it and and then keep in what the C D C suggested and take it to the next council meeting. Any other questions or comments? Roll call please. Mayor Murphy. Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Allen? Yes. Mr. Burchett? Yes. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Mr. Darty? Yes. Ms. Marcus? Yes. That concludes that one. The next item is the Estella software update. Oh, it's and discussion? Yes, ma'am. That would be mine. Uh, I'm going to follow the uh, Chief Cooper lead, and uh, when I'm asking for time for discussion, I'm going to start using the podium. I think that's just a little bit better way to, uh, to approach things. So uh, I hope you uh, appreciate that and, and will indulge my, my needs there. Uh, quick statement before I get started, because I, I just want to make sure uh, you understand why and how I'm, I'm coming forward. I've been with the city now for about 15 months. Uh, I've got some wear on my tires, in essence. Uh, I tell people as I'm introducing myself, I, I consider myself a private cider. That means I came out of college, took some jobs, started a few businesses, sold those, did various things, learned along the way. And about 15 years ago, I started to migrate into the public side, and I, I just felt a, a need and a calling. Uh, my point in that is uh, my experiences and the things I've learned along the way as I've gone from place to place, I, I try and bring along with me. I typically will watch a situation for a cycle. That may be a quarter, a year, a half year. I like to watch how things happen and then, and then try to begin to assist <coughs> however I can in, in the efficient operation. That's my goal. Uh, what really gets me going is, is watching people accomplish things, helping them get from here to there, uh, following a plan. So there's a lot of things that, uh, that are helping out here. Uh, with regards to Acela, uh, when I got here, the, I think the very first meeting that I was here, uh, the uh, chief building officer, uh, Mr. Wensler, produced a report. I actually got a copy of that. Uh, I thought it was interesting that he was presenting that, uh, some good information and some things like that. Uh, and so I entered discussions with him on how you know, we could get more of that. To me, the important part of this is the information, uh, what data we can begin to accumulate and, and how that will help us make better decisions on where to go, how to implement resources, how to be better servants to the, to the community. So uh, here we are 15 months later. Uh, community development is transitioning. Uh, 
don't need to go into too many discussions there, but I just wanted to let you know that where I think I'm trying to put my time and effort in is to use the resources and the things that we already have uh, that we may look at in the future and try and meld them in and utilize these as, as best we can. And, that, and that's really where I'm putting my, my time in now. So I'm working with uh, the engineering assistant, uh, Ben Lynch. Mr. Lynch and I are, are talking regularly as he is trying to cover different uh, aspects of community development, whether that be property maintenance or uh, inspections on uh, uh, projects that are going on out there or other things that come up. I'm trying to work with him to see how we can get that information in a, in a very efficient, effective manner into Acela, into that software, so that we can begin to draw out that information. We want to get away from garbage in, garbage out. Not that that's what's happening right now, but lots of times uh, out there in the world, that's what happens. I want to make sure it's good, accurate information, and it's going to help us make those decisions. My example uh, for that is that uh, going through some of the meetings with the comprehensive plan, uh, we are starting to get some data out that are indicating things that we want to be aware of. We want to make sure that we understand how things are happening out there so, again, we can make adjustments. And there were some questions on uh, property maintenance as one of the things that came up. You, you may have saw that in the packet that I sent out, were a question. And so as I go into the data, as I go into the information, I'd like to be able to kind of figure out why that is happening, where that's coming from. So we're going to begin to enhance the cello. We're going to begin to utilize it a lot more, uh, hopefully get it to a point where property maintenance person can take the iPad out, take some pictures, make some decisions, click box, click box, click box, enter. And by the time that person gets back here, that warning letter is already printed out. It's already wow. set. The process is already there. People have been notified. And I think that's the great value of a cell. It's a very, very powerful piece of software that we have. We need to utilize it wisely. And we need to be able to utilize the flexibility and the adaptability of the software to help us out the best we can to, to work with our, our, our folks. And, and so that's where we're going. I would love to know where these property maintenance issues are that are kind of coming back to us from our businesses. They're saying that's that's one of the questions we have. So where are they? How are, how are we processing those kind of things? That's what I'm doing. I don't want to get into too many details there, but I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that's where I think some of the staff, myself included, are putting a lot of our time and efforts as we go through this process. By the time we bring on a new planner, a new chief building inspector, property maintenance folks, we want to have an a really clean, efficient system so that those young folks come on board. They say, uh, I heard about this. This is cutting edge. I want to be part of this organization and I want to move it forward. So uh, unless there's any questions, again, the actual uh, reports themselves, it's data. It's, it's what comes of that. So when I come forward and, and want to bring you some data and some reports, hopefully I'm going to follow it up with this is what it's indicating to us. We've had discussions, and here's what we're recommending to do. We want to get out ahead of those situations. So that's the Acela report discussion. If there are any questions, uh, again, I just wanted to make sure we're, we're all on the same page and I'm not going off uh, with the guardrails. Uh, you know, Keep the guardrails on me, that, this that kind of thing. This is an update. How much? Pardon? Is this going to cost there, there's us There's no, this oh. is not, this, well? is, no. this is not for council to take action. Essentially, oh. Mr. Eisenbrown is, is, is has, okay. he is yep. sharing that we have capabilities within Excel. Sure. We mm -hmm. have capabilities within Excel that we have not been using. Mm -hmm. And right. with the help of uh, the folks in CD, and, and he forgot to mention uh, uh, IT as well, they've been doing a lot of work to open those up and the other programs within Excel, how they work. So. Uh, what Matt wanted to do is just let you know that uh, we're getting a little more advanced, we hope, over time in CD. And as we bring in the staff, that might be an attractive feature for them, but it'll also expedite the process and uh, uh, really be able to collect the data better than what we've been doing previously. So, Yep, absolutely. Uh, Montgomery County, Kettering, Dayton, uh, Columbus, Toledo, Butler County, Warren County. Those are some of the entities that use this software. Uh, Kettering has invited us over to say, hey, here, here's how we're utilizing, here's how what we're doing. Uh, and again, we just want to see what everybody's okay. doing, bring best practices to the table, uh, and that way we're ready to run when, when we bring these people on. So 
That's, That's all there is. Unless, again, questions? Just want to make sure that uh, I'm in the guardrails. I think the only question I had just got answered because I wasn't sure what you wanted from us. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah, just, just an update. <laughs> just discussion and update, yep. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Well, we're getting ready to go into the comprehensive plan. You might as well stay up there. Oh, I, I, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm in the practice. <laughs> so we have the comprehensive plan update, existing conditions report, key takeaways, next steps, future planning. Yes, Helpful. thank you. This one's mine. This one's a big chunk. There's a lot of things going on, and I know there are a lot of questions out there as we go through this process. I, I think I've said a, a number of times people are getting tired of hearing me saying this is going to raise a lot of questions. We're going to try and answer as many as we can, and we want to go down the pathway so that if there are more, we, we definitely want to go forward with uh, additional uh, work. Uh, the packet that you got was an amalgam, uh, a consolation or combination of about five or six different presentations. Uh, it was part of the actual existing conditions report. I'll say EC report at times. That's, I'm referring to this existing conditions report. Uh, so it was put together half hearted If it doesn't kind of flow very well, I apologize for that. But the whole idea here was I don't want to necessarily say to you, here is this 120-page book. Uh, please go and read it. You certainly can. We'll do that. And I want to make sure that that is clear as well. If you want a printed copy of this report, I will have one produced for you. We're still going through the drafts and kind of going back and forth. Uh, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to stop for a couple seconds and maybe pull out some key data for you. Uh, so that you wouldn't necessarily have to go in, in, in that far into it. So uh, that, that's what the purpose is. is, is again, it's a little haphazard, uh, but we'll try and make this as quick as possible because we got a lot to go through. So 120-page uh, EC report. There is also available or will become available is the entire survey results. That's about 75 pages or so, all of those questions. You'll see all the comments, and there was an example of that we'll review. Uh, but there is a lot of information coming down the pike as we go through this. So I'll get into the, uh, the, the presentation itself, the, the slides, as best we can here. Uh, first page there. Let's go on to the second page, if you would. There we go, project overview. So again, where are we now in this process? A lot of people, I'm waiting for the good stuff. When we start really getting to the, the new ideas, that's where we are. This first portion of it, uh, phase one, gathering information. So the existing conditions report was created. They did the survey work. They've gone to events. They will still continue doing that, but the whole idea was to create a packet of information so that if somebody came to town and said, tell me about Moraine, bang, they can put this on the table and a whole bunch of data is there. And there's a lot of good, good data uh, in, in this, this thing. We are now going into that next phase. We started last night with some ideas. So here's what we're hearing. Here are the concern areas. Here are the things. How would we want to approach some of these things. So ideas are starting to get generated. We'll go back through and, and continue to follow up on that. But the next set of visits, the next time they come, you'll begin to see some of those ideas that are floating out there. And the next step will be, here's what we're hearing. We had some ideas or thoughts or processes. Uh, some uh, ideas on how we can solve those, some development ideas, some things like that. Uh, help us choose what direction you want to go. So they will begin talking with you all. They'll begin talking, uh, well not begin talking, they'll continue talking with the, the community, get those ideas, a lot of our partners and those kind of things. So that is really coming up, hopefully by the end of the year, if we can stay on target. Uh, we'll begin to kind of put this plan together. Uh, we'll have some open houses. A lot of things will be presented out there and people will be able to give feedback on where we're going and, and what we're doing. So that'll be phase three. All right, next page. Uh, and then go on right to the next one, public engagement. All right, so through the public engagement, uh, met with 22 stakeholders. Those are organizations, companies, uh, community leaders that came into our various focus groups. Uh, there was a time here that I don't think is counted in these numbers that was spent with staff to get background information. Uh, so there's a lot of good things that came from that, and we're getting more of that. I'm already getting calls from entities saying, I hear you're doing some planning. We'd like to sit down and talk about uh, what you're doing here and there. Online survey, uh, 202 responses. That doesn't seem like a lot, but if you think about elections and they start doing polls and data and projections, that's actually 3% of the community, and that gives them enough information to be able to say, here's generally 
what we're hearing. Uh, it's not going to be specific. There may be some outliers out there, but it's a good way to get started on the concerns and direction and those kind of things. They were at the Easter egg hunt, and they were at the movie in the park. Uh, next one, if you would. Top themes that came from the stakeholder meetings. Placemaking, that's a term that you're going to begin to hear a lot more. It's real big in planning right now. Uh, and so what I did is I printed out a uh, uh, definition of that right off the internet. Love Google. Uh, so placemaking, straighten, strengthening the connection between people and the places they share. Placemaking refers to a collaborative process by which we can shape our public realm in order to maximize shared value. Okay. Uh, another person says there are four key design components to placemaking. The theme, the active transportation, the gateway and signage that's involved, and the amenities. And so the idea here is placemaking is what do you think about when you're talking about a place. For our purposes, I'm I've thought about it a little bit, and I think the way I would describe it to you all is in 15 or 20 years, what placemaking is will be when somebody says, Moraine, home to this. Moraine, home to that. It's the place where the Wright brothers did their work. It's where GM was. It was all of those things. We're at a point of saying, what do we want that answer to be in 15 or 20 years? What do we want to start working on so that people think about what Moraine is. That's what we gotta, we gotta start planting that idea out there. There are some things about Moraine uh, that are out there. I think some of those we want to change and we wanna let people know this is a great place to live. It's a great place to work. It's a great place to play. And the play is an important aspect of that. So placemaking is very important. Parks and community centers, I don't need to read too much on that. Aesthetics and investments, uh, identity and branding, attainable housing. The attainable housing goes to workforce, our businesses, Workforce, workforce, workforce. It is all about workforce right now and will be for three to five years uh, is the way I see it with some of the things that are going on there. So uh, that is there, but again, you'll, you'll start to hear more and more about placemaking. Uh, next slide there, beautiful. Top themes from the surveys and events. Uh, very nice number here that 70% of the surveys came from Moraine folks. Uh, you can see the numbers on the graph there on the right side from where everybody else came from, but we got really good information from our folks. Uh, from the serving events, providing and maintaining infrastructure. People want to know that streets, roads, bridges uh, are in pretty good shape. Uh, maintain the existing businesses. I think our community knows how valuable the businesses are to us and our existence. Parks and programming, planting and streetscaping, job creation, law enforcement, property maintenance and infrastructure. Uh, I, I start a couple of those, parks and programming, planting and streetscapes, law enforcement and property maintenance. Those are some of the things that you'll see a couple more times as this goes through that kind of bubbled up to the top. So what are we doing about those? Uh, next slide. You would, yep, top themes from all public engagement. Again, placemaking, so this is the amalgam, this is everything together. Place-based marketing, how are we communicating to everybody else who is out there? Why do they come here? Why do they want to come here? And how can we keep them here once they are? We've got to get the word out. Aesthetics and property maintenance, parks and rec, economic developments, housing and infrastructure. So that, that's the basically the, the uh, Again, the combination of them. Uh, just a little bit more in placemaking. These are the challenges. I'll let that one sit out there for a little while. I don't need to read through it, but as the information comes in, you can phrase the questions in such a way uh, that you can begin to figure out what people think we need to be working on. Uh, crime, community branding, education, <coughs> quality of life. Uh, the crime one was an unusual one. Last night we had a quick discussion on it. Uh, it's the unknown things that are happening out there. And again, I don't think it's anybody not doing what they need to be doing. Uh, I know my impression has always been, and several people have mentioned, uh, Moraine, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's an issue there. But that was one of the things we got back from our businesses. So we got to figure out what that means and where that's going. Uh, but to get placemaking, we don't want the image, we don't want the, the word of Moraine to be negative in any way. Wait, we want to make sure we're, we're covering ourselves. Uh, Placemaking again, yep, going down, down the line. There's some good quotes in there. Uh, these are ones that came through the survey or different suggestions. They talked to a lot of people. Write your suggestion on the, uh, the card and, and drop it in there. Uh, a lot about 
once you get here, what are we doing, where are we going, again, why are we staying? All right, next one, stakeholder summary, beautiful. Uh, I think the, the first line there, the first bullet, is something that, that thematically puts us right in, in the middle of this. Got to change the perception that the streets roll up at 5 o'clock. The city is not walkable, bikeable, focus on more, be, being more inviting. Uh, uh, and in essence, it, it is one of those things. We definitely have a divide uh, to a certain extent. At 5 o'clock, you'll see in some of the numbers, things change here. And, and again, we, are, we want people to stick around. Uh, next one. Uh, this is just what the summary will look like. If you want to read through all the survey summary uh, questions, answers, all of those things. Uh, again, this was question number one. Hopefully you all took the survey and you remember seeing this. What are Moraine's greatest assets? This is how they ticked out. If you go out to the next page, uh, the graph is broken down. You've got some numbers there. And then every comment that was made and all the questions, it would say, do you have any other questions or, or any other comments, any other information you want to give to us? That's all listed there. Uh, don't pay too much attention to this, the person who made the same comment uh, on every one of the, the questions. Uh, that happens. You set that aside. Let's get to the good information and such. So on to the next page and then beyond that, if you would. Uh, so that was a survey, the public engagement, some of the key information that came out of that. Again, you can get into this as deep as you want, but I, I would just tell you, you got some really good quality people here. Uh, we are, we're getting into this and we're definitely asking a lot of questions to see where we can go with this. So please rest assured on that. All right, now on to the existing conditions report itself. Uh, and here I got seven key things. Again, this is 120 pages. This is not one where you want to grab the book and try and stay awake. Uh, this is one where you got to parse it out maybe 10, 15 pages at a time and then take the nap, get back up, and, and get after it again. So uh, this is the first key piece of information that I would say, and it's about economic development. Uh, in this case, the graph in the middle. Again, don't worry about too many of the words and the specifics to me. All of the colors are the key thing that I immediately glean from that. From an economic development standpoint, the more colors, the better. That represents diversification. We learned a great lesson from the GM situation. We are not completely dependent on one entity, one industry, one company. We have diversified. We learned that lesson well. We've done very well. I had several people look at that and go, wow. That is amazing. There are some really good things that have come out of that. And again, we have learned the lessons, we've stabilized, and, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, uh, yeah. <coughs> next page, if you would, yep, go to the next one there. Total employment. And again, this kind of represents the, the recovery that we've come through. So 2002, 17,300, 2008, and then that we begin to really drop, we are back. Uh, 2020, we're a little bit better than in that situation. And so hopefully everybody understands that at this point we're back and we need to start moving forward. We've done a great job. Uh, next slide up there. Uh, manufacturing, 29.5% of our, our uh, workforce is in the manufacturing industry. Not all one manufacturing. We've got a variety of manufacturing. That's what we want. And so. These are all amazing numbers. Again, I had several people, uh, even last night, make comments. Wow, some of these things are eye-popping. And again, I think we're in great shape that way. Uh, next page, economic development, perfect. The key piece of information on this page is all the way to the right on the graph, the very last red dot. We are at 98% occupancy for industrial properties. 98% of our property is already full. That's a great thing. But it's also presented some issues. We need to begin to produce more. If we're going to go down this pathway and we're going to continue to uh, rely on that, and there's nothing wrong with that plan, it's, it's worked very well for us, we need to continue going on, on down that road. Same thing for residential. We're at mid-90s, I believe was the number, uh, in, in occupancy. We need more residential spaces. Uh, and retail and commercial space, we're about the same thing. We've got a couple of places where commercial office space is available, but for the most part, we're in, we're in good shape. Uh, now, where are we going from here? So that, that's a great number, but it, it does present some to-dos uh, for me and the, uh, the community development folks on there. Next page. Uh, next piece of key data. We're young. 
Yeah. My Lord, we're young, and that is very surprising. A lot of people looking at that going, wow, I can't believe it. So 35.7 uh, is our average age. We saw that in that initial when, when American Structure Point came. Uh, I would say that the, the uh, call to, to, uh, to uh, work and, and, and to get moving on things is we got to connect with those folks. we got to figure out where they are, what they're doing, what they're interested in, and, and, and why they're here, and then capitalize on that. Uh, next page. The age distribution, uh, again, lots of good graphics here, uh, lots of good things here. I think the combination of the specifics of the ages is important uh, in combination with some of the, the programming that we're doing, specifically parks and rec. So this is broken down by age. When you get into it, we've got 6,491 6, people that live here. If you look at the numbers for ages 6 through 15, 16, about 10 year span, we have 800 kids in the city of Moraine that are between kindergarten and driver's license. Wow. That's a pretty small market. The reality is, and you know, when I was doing my business consulting and, and I, was, I was in that, uh, that gig for a while, and I get somebody coming in saying, you know what, my barbecue sauce is the best in the world. My family tells me this, my neighbors tell me this. I'm gonna start selling it. Where are you gonna sell it? I'm gonna sell it on the corner. Where are your customers? How many customers are you working for? I don't think it's going to be a successful business because your market is so small. So where I'm saying the call to action again here this here is if we're going to continue to do parks and rec activities the way that we are, remember you're pouring a lot of resources into 800 kids. Not that they don't deserve it and not that we don't want to get there, but there might be a different pathway to get more of our kids more involved and doing what they want to do. Again, but we've got to connect with those folks. Uh, we're very young, but uh, that, that's a key piece of information. And I'm going along with that, and we all know we don't have our own school system. So connecting with those kids and getting them interested and getting them active is, is where the, the charge is. Next page. Uh, another key one here, right there on the left side, first bullet point, 98.1%, 98% of the local employees do not live in Marine. 98% of our employees, 49 out of 50 people lined up at Fuyao do not live in Marine. Think about five o'clock, the whistle blows. In, the, in the, the map on the right side, you really can't read it, 13,340 people come here to work every day. 13,000 drive in, park, do their thing, and then they leave. That is a huge market. Yeah. That is where we gotta focus. How can we get those people to stay here? How can we get them interested in doing what we are, are where we wanna go and what we wanna do? Uh, 2,684 people leave Moraine. Uh, that number was a little bit above 90%, so the, that number above 90% of the people who live in Moraine don't work here. They go someplace else. So some, somewhere we got flipped. And in the middle in the circle, 263 people live and work in Moraine. 263. That's it. Now, again, this is all just information. This is all just for us for, to contemplate. But how will it affect how we're approaching things and what we're doing? That's, that's the key thing as we move forward. Next slide. Uh, Primary and extended trade areas. What this means, again, don't worry about the graph is showing, for people who live in Moraine, if you drive five minutes outside of Moraine, that's the green, to go shopping, if you drive 10 minutes outside of Moraine, that's the blue area. And so what it is doing is where is Moraine, where are Moraine folks spending their money and how are they doing that? So next slide. Uh, again, this is just an example of data. Don't even want to spend any time on here. This is the kind of minutia you can get into, but there's a lot of good information. So go to the next page if you would. We're back to the graph. And the key one there is on the left side. Well, all of those are key. $15 million of Moraine folks' money is spent outside Moraine on clothing and clothing accessories. $8 million on electrics, on electronics and appliances, $7 million building materials, $6 million health. The big one for me, $8 million is spent outside Moraine going to a sit-down restaurant. 
we got to get that stuff in here. We, we got to work on that. Those, again, this is the good information. So there's a real opportunity for us to develop some of those things. Let's get those restaurants. That's what everybody wants. That makes sense. That becomes a target for us. We need to get those restaurants here. How can we lure them here? We want those people to stay. So uh, working with that. All right, next slide. Parks and Rec. This is, I think, the last key piece of information that I would pull out of there. Uh, we got a lot of parks. Uh, that's a great thing. It is what people know us for, but I think we need to contemplate the idea of what are we doing with those parks and how are we trying to get our people to utilize them and going there. It's just my thought initially here. So you look at that uh, in, the, in the chart on the left there, residents per park, 433 people compared to all agencies. Now this is national numbers, all parks, all municipal parks, state parks. Uh, so in cities, most of the time, if you, you average them all out, there's about 2,300 people per park uh, in a lot of communities. And then if you just look on the right side, communities less than 20,000, that's probably a little closer to us. Typically, there's about 1,200. We have a lot of parks for the people that we have. A great thing, let's take advantage of those assets. Acres per, per uh, 1,000 residents, we got a lot of park space. Uh, how can we utilize it? How can we use this asset to our advantage to start bringing people in? And then miles of trails, I think we've done a great job there. That is what people are looking for when we start talking about demand. What are people looking for where they want to live? Hiking trails, well-being, all those things are very vitally important. So just a lot of good information. And then uh, last page, I think, yep. Uh, uh, I think there's just more more on the parks. The parks is, has kind of risen to the top as one of those things. Again, we've got a, a great asset, great great opportunity. Are we approaching it the right way? So those are the questions there. Uh, that's it. That was quick and dirty. It took me probably six, seven hours to get through all 120 pages, kind of going through and highlighting. And I was doing some editing. I found some uh, some errors and those kind of things. I know uh, the manager found some things, so we, we corrected those. But reading in through the data. So if you are interested in getting into all this, this will be published. Again, I, I will get you copies of this information, and you, you can do that. Uh, but again, I think you, you've got some really good quality people. We're, we're moving this along. I'm excited about where this is going myself. I think it's going to present a lot of opportunities for us. So that is the status. Again, you'll, you'll see a little different approach to things in the, in the future as we go through this. Uh, any questions? Is there anything I can answer for you at I this point? I just have to chuckle because I, we, we could right now we could ask the question of over half of the people in this room, why don't you live in Moraine? Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> looking around, only council lives in Moraine. Everybody else lives outside Moraine. Mm -hmm. So I had to chuckle when you're when you're pointing that out. Yep. Yep. That, it's, a, it's a big opportunity. We got to figure out what those folks are looking for, and and then you know work towards bringing that on. It's just it's really looking at the markets and uh, and, and those kind of things. So uh, again, any other questions? Anything else? We'll we'll, uh, we'll keep moving this down the road. I just wonder about other cities. I know mm -hmm. years ago, Dayton tried to force people living in their city to have employment. But I just wonder, isn't all cities pretty much like Moraine? People leave to work somewhere else. They don't live there. And I'm, and I'm thinking of my family. Mm -hmm. Not a one of them work where they live. I, I think that is it, that's not uncommon, surely. I, that's yeah. what I'm it's, saying. It's we're not, not we're not the abnormal in that respect. Oh no, not, no, not, no, not by. I, I think our numbers are a little higher. Uh, I, I tell you, yeah, that that, that number leaving uh, or coming in and then leaving at five o'clock. That was you know those are some numbers. But at the same time, when we sat down with developers and we talked through those, it goes that that's the car counts. When when retail folks start looking at Moraine. Uh, the number of drive-by car counts when we start talking about locations and customer opportunities and those kind of things, it skyrockets. It's off the charts. Uh, we just need to bring the whole thing together so that those people start sticking around here. Uh, and no, why don't you come down to me for dinner, bring the kids, we're going to go down to the park, we're going to see the band, we're going to go hiking, we're going to go fishing, we're going to go biking, whatever it ends up being, sports all of those things. And that gets us back to the beginning. In 15, 20 years, Moraine is home to what? That's the way I would look at it. Uh, what will people be talking about that Moraine is 
the home of and represent, and it's what's in their mind, because we're going we're gonna to put some ideas in their mind. We're going to go forward and say, this is why you need to be coming to Moraine, why you need to stay. Uh, so yes, yeah, it's absolutely. We, but got, we appreciate every one of those 13,000 people that paid. Oh, we, we appreciate them, <laughs> and we want to do more with them. Tell us what you're looking for. We'll, we'll bring it to the table. So we're just going to be reaching out there. There's 17,000, I'm sorry. All right, any other questions? Thank you, that was very good. Thank you very much. If there's anything I can do, let me know. Uh, and if you want a copy of the books, you want to copy of those things, I'll, I'll get them printed out and, and we'll get them out there. So thanks. Good. All right, thank you. Okay, our last item is the parks discussion, the baseball field opportunity. Well, I don't think this is as exciting as that was, but here we are. <laughs> Um, so just going off of kind of what he's saying uh, or what he's given you, um, we've been approached here over the last couple months uh, by two organizations uh, about Waxfield. Um, who we've been approached by was the West Carrollton Schools uh, baseball varsity team. Um, if you don't, obviously I think everyone knows what's going on there with the schools being torn down um, and rebuilding the high school and the junior high and all that kind of stuff. Um, the varsity baseball team is going to be displaced. Their field is no longer going to be there by the highway anymore. Um, so they are kind of looking for a field to play. Well, Wax Park is a big baseball field. Um, so their varsity baseball coach reached out to me. Um, he came out, you know, looked at Wax Field with me and Rocky and Chris. And um, so they, they have interest. That's one of the organizations um, that have that. The other one is um, a local business here in town already. It's called P413. I believe, Shirley, you were at the ribbon cutting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and Mike. Um, so they have a lot of interest, actually, in Moraine and staying in Moraine. They want to stay here. Um, but they're outgrowing their facility down there. So um, they are definitely looking to expand uh, on that. But they're both unique in their ways of going about how this could happen. Um, so I'm just bringing it to you to discuss. That's all this is. This, this is just preliminary. This is just trying to get your thoughts uh, on what could. Go ahead. I ask what the second organization. Oh, what, it, what is that organization? P413. Yeah. Um, so they, it's a baseball uh, training facility, but they also have basketball. Um, and then a golf simulator, I believe, and then weight training. Um, anything else? Coming? It's a Christian organization. Yeah, it's an indoor athletic facility. Oh, okay. yeah. So if you go down Dryden, that they yes. opened a couple of years ago. I forget what that. What's that? But Arbor. Yeah, back in Arbor, they're in one of the um, industrial industrial buildings that they just kind of put nets up and, and made it. It's a really neat place. If you haven't been there, you can, I, I would suggest going down there just to check it out. Um, I but was they, so impressed. Yeah, they, but they're, they're very great people. Mm -hmm. They've come in. Uh, we've had a couple meetings, me and Matt and Chris, with them. Um, but they are definitely interested in staying in Moraine. They want to stay here. They, they like Moraine. It fits them. It fits everything that they do. Um, but they have to grow. That's where they're at. I mean, the, the Canes baseball organization is just – just keeps growing and growing and growing. They're expanding out to, or they expanded out to softball already. They're kind of wanting to expand out into basketball and soccer at the same time. So there is a, there is a lot of potential out of them. The, the difference in the two organizations, um, and it's pretty evident, the school's only temporary. You know, the, the varsity baseball team, they're eventually gonna have their own field. Um, but they came to us uh, in need of using a field, but in order to use Wax Field, they have to meet certain requirements, well, and that's going to cost money. So, um, I've been in. I talked to their varsity baseball coach yesterday. They had a he had a meeting with the athletic director and uh, Jack Haig. I think he's over all the facilities and stuff. Um, it didn't kind of come back as what I was hoping for um, with what they would give us or try to give us some money and then we would have to pay some extra money to fix wax field in order for them to play by next spring. The problem with that is, is they got to do this quick. So in order to get the field ready we're going to have to get, or whoever that might be would have to get that started um, 
September, October, somewhere in there in order to get the field, uh, the grass and all that kind of stuff uh, ready. Um, with what came out of that from what Mark told me, they're the coach, the schools may be only willing to give like $20,000. Well, we got a quote for the, just the fence alone of $48,000. So the city would probably have to absorb a lot to fix Wax Field. Now, does Wax Field need a little update? Probably. I mean, it's, it's an, older, an older field. Um, so there, there's that. But the Keynes organization is ready to come in and throw seventy-five dollars to $100,000 right now to redo Wax Field. Um, so this, it's kind of a different uh, business model that they, that they want to go down, but they need to expand. So in expanding, there's other things that they want to have happen. Um, they would love to come here and talk to you at the next meeting and kind of explain what they want, what they see in their future. Um, the Canes organization has been around for 23 years, uh, very successful. A lot of kids have gone through the program. Um, they've told us that they got, you know, anywhere between 100,000 to 150,000 people that have gone through or are currently part of their, their organization. Um, if we had something going on, that's a lot of extra eyeballs that are coming into Moraine daily because these kids are training day in, day out here in Moraine. Whether you see them down there or not, there's 2,500 kids that are coming in every single week doing training. Brent, what does Gaines want for that seventy-five to $100,000 investment? So, what is, so what is we kind of started going thing? down that hole a little bit without, we didn't want to go too far without talking to you all first. We didn't really want to pose any of those things yet. They, I believe, I mean, is, want, it, is it a 10-year lock on the field? Is it, I mean, have they shared anything? Yeah, so the field would still be ours, and we would rent it. It would be ours. We would take care of all that kind of stuff. They're looking at other options for themselves to build a building somewhere and then eventually maybe growing that out into a baseball complex somewhere else in the city. So that's kind of their vision, I believe. Somewhere beyond WAX is what you're Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So they really would like to use WAX more as a training facility and diamond and then eventually grow out somewhere in Moraine and, and, and put more fields in. That's their vision, but I would rather them come in and kind of a explain that to you all as well um, so we just sat down and talked to them I just wanted to bring it to your attention of what's kind of going on the same thing with the Canes like if they did decide or we decide to go down that road of them you know redoing the field uh, it would have to happen quick because what we would love to do if that's the case is then if they did that then in turn rent it out to the West Carrollton varsity baseball team for three years, four years, however long it's gonna to take to get their schools and baseball field done. So I just wanted to let you know if you have questions about it, I'm sure you do. It's probably, your minds are probably going around and around and around about it. Um, but we've just been presented with these and uh, they've come to us, sorry. Um, they've come to us with this. <clears throat> and it's just, it's an opportunity um, to maybe upgrade wax like we talked at the last meeting. I know at the last meeting, you know, we, uh, <laughs> off the Facebook posts and all that, we know that things need to kind of change maybe a little bit in our facilities or in our parks and all that. But um, the programming that we're offering, you know, people really aren't showing up for them and we don't know why. This would be an extra 100,000 to 150,000 eyeballs that we could promote to, market to, to them, to bring them to our programs or keep them when they drop their kids off in the city. So that is kind of where, it's kind of the focus. We want to keep people here and we want to keep the businesses here. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know their employment. I don't know how much money and income tax we get off them. It's probably not a lot. Um, but we're not looking, I'm not, I don't want to look at it that way. I'd rather look at it as, you know, Parks and Rec is getting eyeballs on and the city of Moraine is getting more eyeballs on it. I mean, these kids that are in the Canes organization are coming from everywhere in this greater Dayton area. So, I mean, Springboro, Centervilles, um, I mean, how far do people come from? From Oakley State. Cincinnati. Columbus. I mean, there's, there's kids that are coming to play in this organization that, um, they come here and practice a lot. We just, we don't see them 
but they're here. So, if is you, it not true that they? I remember, Mike, and you probably do too. They start the children even before they're able to to be on a team. If I'm, I'm they they build the they don't just they build the whole person. They work with the kids from early to yes. up to they become. They've had several big stars. Yeah. So, uh, based on that. So that's why I would love for them to come here uh, the next meeting to, to kind of talk to you about, I don't know all they offer, I just know a little bit of what they've told us through those meetings, um, but they would definitely love to come here and, and speak to you about what they have to offer. I mean, the, the guy sent us an email with all the things they do um, and um, all the things they offer down there at P413. So I think that would be good since Mike and I were the only two that were able to go that day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other council, if they, they could just hear the program, yeah. I was, I was, I stayed longer there than I ever stayed at an open house because yeah. I watched the kids. I watched yeah. them play. Yeah. So, so again, back to to what I was saying. That you know, we got these two organizations. One is want to give a little bit of money that's going to be very temporary that we're going to have to spend money on if we wanted to update wax park like that or we can listen to what the canes have to offer and they're the ones that would be bless you flipping the bill for most of that stuff or not all of it so if somehow we could get them to work together because we do have an investment in west carrollton schools with our students right we have students that go to west carrollton yeah. that probably play on that ball team yeah uh, if we, I mean, to me, the perfect thing would be for Canes to put the money in, and then if they would rent it, to, I mean, that's that's for discussion yeah. later. That sounds like it would be the perfect. Oh, match. And, and we did talk. Wax Park is not Wax Field is not going to be theirs. That is that's ours. We will rent it. Now I will be obviously in discussion with them if they need it for rentals or they need it to train or something like that. But it would still be for us to rent, not not through them. That would be through us. Waxfield would be so. Um, it's kind of where they're at, but like I said, they definitely need to expand, big time. Um, okay, they are in. so they're yeah. outgrowing it by a lot. So I could ask the West Carrollton group to come in too, if you would like. Um, at the same time, um, I, think it, I think it'd be better to work with B first to, okay. to understand what their proposal is. Absolutely, what their yeah. lock is going to be for their investment, right? Right. Yep. Once we do that, then we can understand how we could integrate or bring West Carrollton into it. Okay. Uh, based on what you've said, I mean, yeah. that sounds like that might be the right path. I feel, me personally, I think Matt would agree, yes, and Chris would agree that, yes, we probably should bring the Canes in just to hear what they have to say to you all and explain mm -hmm. kind of their and, their model. And, again, we can, what we learn from them, we can see how could they partner with West Carrollton. Right. right? Because I think Shirley has a good point too that we we work well with the school district. That's important. That's and you know, I I, I played baseball for West Carroll Varsity Baseball, yeah. so like I I feel what they're going through to not have a field. That's Absolutely. not a great feeling yeah. at all. And you know, through some of the conversations we had, it sounds like in order for them, they could go rent fields, but it is going to cost them an astronomical number to rent a field somewhere else. And I don't know if the program or the school district can afford that, and it's it's uh, it's probably definitely another price range where they're probably going to have to make shift something, and it's probably not going to be the best next couple of years for their program. So we'll just have to inter integrate the dialogue between the two. Yep. Let's learn about gains first. Okay. Because again, they're going to have something on their end for their investment. Absolutely. We need to figure out what that is. Yeah. And and like I said, I think it's. You know, an indoor facility, a bigger indoor facility, and then expand that out later on in five to ten years of uh, down the road to to eventually build their own little complex type deal. So, that's but we need to do a better job. And I know you do everything. I know programs had to be canceled because there wasn't enough participation. And then I see on that comprehensive study, there's nothing to do in Moraine. We have so much, and I've said that before. We have seniors sitting at home depressed when we offer so many senior yeah. programs, food. We have free food for the children right now. Not one, yeah. am I right? Not one child. So the month of June, yeah, food. month of June, we had 17 total. And That's our it. programs are 
wonderful. We offer more than any other community. We have no participation, but then they'll say, there's nothing to do in Marie. I, I, I have to take my kids to King's Island. Yeah, you've got to go spend money yeah. when you could be here right. doing it, you know, free. Yep. I, don't know, I don't know the answer to that. Matt, if you can help us out. <laughs> We've <Yeah>. tried. <clears throat> we, we say it on council. We tell yep. people. We and it's, invite. It's not a lack of, you know, what we're offering. There's plenty to offer I that know. we have. Uh, it's, I don't know if the messenger's not getting it out good enough. Like, I, I don't know what it is. I don't understand how you can have 5,000 people at 4th of July, and then you do a program for those families yeah. or kids. You do the movie night, and you get 40. You know, it's kind of like... Where are we at here? Well, you know, and then, and like you said, they tell us we don't offer anything. Well, that's that's a lot. I mean, we have a complete rec center over there full of weight equipment and a gym, and you name right. it. We have that for them. You could go to the civic center. You got a game room. You got TVs. You got the commons. I mean, we offer all this stuff, but still, nobody they they go back to Facebook and yeah. and tell us we don't do anything. So one so. said, "Well, I have to pay at the pain center," and I said. Civic Center has weight equipment. Yeah. They have a whole room down yeah. there. They have a game room. They have a puzzle. Mm -hmm. They have all sorts of things. Why don't you utilize it yeah. instead of complaining? Yeah, yeah and when, and when they the same problem. stuff before, you know, with citizens saying, well, you know, used to be the uh, the uh, Gearhart uh, Center, uh, Civic Center offered a uh, lot for the kids. The kids, and my kids, grew up there. You know, they, they yeah. Were, they so were did there mine. The summer all program. The time. Summer. Yeah. <laughs> different things but i don't know that that doesn't still exist it's just not being utilized yeah. like you say so the last year we did like summer camp official summer camp yeah. we had eight kids. eight kids you know and it's just like we can't it, so much money and in, into staff and time right. that staff puts into it to to get that it's it's not i hate to say it, it's not worth it i mean it's it's, right. it's really not um now, are we hitting those eight kids? Yes, but I think we could figure something out to do with those eight kids then make them pay $55 a week and then maybe show up, maybe not show up. It's just, it, it's, we're, we're to that point right now. But so. I signed into the um, physical fitness room. I saw three your name. Weeks, three weeks in a row, my name was the only one on the list. Yeah. Three weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. Nobody else yeah. had even been there. Yeah. And I said to, I think, Dorothy. Or yeah, Dorothy. One of them. I said, am I the only one that uses that? And she said, so far. Yeah. So why are people yeah. not? People used to always use the fitness mm -hmm. room in that. When I used to go there, it was always it's, packed. They're so not now. I'll say, with even with the rec center, our prices, our memberships yeah. are so low. low. It, it is. And they're I'm, going to the Y. And they're going somewhere else. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand it. Maybe it's because they don't think we have good equipment. But over the last five uh, years, we oh have updated yeah. Very good equipment. the equipment in there is, is very nice. The treadmills we just bought, I mean, it's all state-of-the-art, up-to-date uh, with most of the stuff. So Maybe National Night Out, we can have a, a – well, we did have Parks and Rec. Yeah, we'll have a booth. But maybe – I don't know I don't know how we get the message out because I've said it in open meetings yeah. that people need to utilize well, it. We have seniors that could have, a, could have meals, mm -hmm. and they're not taking advantage mm -hmm. of it. So. Well, after, you know, after the last meeting we had, looking at a lot of the, the data that he talks about that we're getting through our new software that Parks and Rec got in February, it, none, none of this is really supported by Moraine residents. It, it's not. It, we are getting supported by outside citizens of Moraine. That's, so at one time when we, at the very beginning when we were tracking it, it was like four to one, um, non-residents to residents that were supporting the rec center and it's probably still fluctuating right around that number of you know 25 percent is moraine residents 75 percent is non-residents that are coming to the rec center and when uh, jeanette nora hosted the first suburbs and council was invited i did go and we had um city manager in uh, kettering uh, kettering he said or no, it wasn't Kettering. Which one was it? Um, Oakwood. Oakwood. Said we would die for a place like this. And I said, we actually have two. And about that time, you came up. Yeah, that's and they said, you have two like this? And I said, yes, we have the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. And they said, 
Moraine is so blessed to have, I mean, he went yeah. on and on. Right. And I said, if we could only get people to use it. Yep. <laughs> That's that, where I would say is the, the, the benefit for some of these things over the move forward is to get those eyeballs, as, as he said. So yeah. the sacrifice of working with people from outside Moraine just gets the turnstile rolling. Exactly. There's more people seeing what's going on. So if folks are coming to uh, Wax Park to do baseball practice, dropping the kids off, they walk across, oh, by the way, yeah, I knew that I can either go into the exercise room or I can go in and catch this because I saw the Go Yoga advertisement last week when I was here. It's just market awareness. It really comes into it. Uh, it's breaking habits. By the time these kids get to kindergarten, first grade, second grade, their pathways are, are really structured out. That they're in preschool, they're seeing these things. They're, there's advertisement getting to them and they're making decisions and setting up habits before we ever have a chance to get to, get to them. And a lot of that is because we don't have schools. Again, it's, it's not bad or good, nothing against the schools. It's just we don't have some of the avenues that some of those other folks have. Uh, so how can we get that accomplished? How can we make that contact? I, I think getting people to drive into town for whatever our purpose ends up being, we're getting them here. They're coming three or four times a week. Now we're starting to play off that market. Now, now we've got the opportunity to really roll on some things. And the benefit for Moraine folks is now we're able to finance and we're able to fund through operations lots of amenities. Now I can go up and I can take part in this. I can take part in, in that because now I've got people coming here. Parks can put up new equipment. They can do things. That, again, the turnstiles are rolling. Now our people are going to benefit. It's, it's that backside. Uh, of the situation. Uh, and again, you can always come back around and say, if, if we're concerned about our 800 kids, if you want to participate with the Canes program or go to P14 for soccer, lacrosse, whatever they end up getting into, we can always turn around and say, hey, it's, this is a Marine resident. We, we want to supplement them. We want to help them out. If it makes sense, we, we can do that. We, again, we can, we can take advantage of that. So it's not us putting the programs on. We're not paying the overhead of having instructors. We're not going through all of that rigmarole of having somebody sit at the gate and, and wait for people to come in. They're taking care of all of those things. We're taking advantage of the eyeballs coming in and getting a great impression of Moraine. And then they're coming in and, oh, well, I need to eat. Well, guess what? We put in, and here's our cost is additional parking. You know, we got to take care of these folks. But we put in the food truck court. And now when there's a tournament going on or we've got a weekend of games going on in our facilities, they're all outside people, let's bring in the food trucks and let's start this thing. And we begin to go down the road of programming and having activities going on. And again, our folks can walk up there and say, hey, I, a food truck's going to be here for something else. I'm not doing that, but I want to go get a hot dog or I want to do those things. So let's start by trying to get a nice restaurant up where Frisch is. <laughs> There's something. I'd like a Cane's chicken. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, to, it's fitting. Wait a minute. I tried to get a Canes and Bob Evans. <laughs> I tried to get Lee's Chicken, and they wouldn't build a Moraine. But honestly, what I think we're missing is more restaurants where you can go down and sit down and eat. like Restaurants. Mm -hmm. Used to be. But Frisch has stopped putting money in that restaurant, it seems like, about 10 years yeah. ago. Well, the, the building... It Nobody it wanted even, in. it was grimy to even go Nobody in that building. Right. It was just, I know, no one's well, ever heard that I'd like to have some Culver's. Yeah. I don't know, anyone's ever heard of Culver's? Okay. Culver's? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love Best that. shakes, root beers, oh, I love hamburgers, butter burgers. Butter burgers. Love it all. Butter burgers. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, those folks aren't going to go anywhere where there's not people. We need to get the people, and we need to be able to show them. We got eyeballs. Yep. We got folks coming down the line. We got rooftops here. You need to consider that. And now think about our development. If we can show these folks, we've got this going on here, we've got that going on here, this would be a great place for a restaurant. It all fits together. Yeah, I'd like to tease up uh, like Mr. a Miller. cracker barrel or something like that. Mr. Miller has the, the one more question. For yes. You, Back to the ball field. Yes. Uh, with the decline of the Moraine West Carroll Little League, which used to be large, I've kind of lost track on the. Who's using that field the last three or four summers? Yeah. Who's been using it? So Wax Field wasn't, well, it was used by the Canes this year. Um, okay. So they used it. But previously to that, it was used by uh, Star City Lightning, which was a travel baseball team out of Miamisburg. Um, 
So they rented it. They played some games and stuff, but not very many people. So the West Carrollton Baseball Club used it. They didn't use it this year because they didn't have a 14U program. So if you don't know, West Carrollton Baseball Club is basically the West Carroll Moraine Little League. Oh, um, that's kind of what ha – there is Moraine West Carrollton Little League, but it's not big at all. Um, the West Carrollton Baseball Club kind of took that over. Um, so they are using – uh, the Civic Center's fields, the West Carrollton Baseball Club. Also, uh, a resident, I think his name's Stephen Massey, he has a softball program that also rents those fields as well. So um, that's who's been using it the majority of the time over the last couple of years. So, yeah, 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 yeah I, I, the, the one thing I would say about the West Carrollton Moraine Little League is um, they still have a shed over on our property at the Civic Center. Um, the one that's just right outside of the batting, oh, cage. The batting cage. Yeah, yeah. that's there. They don't come over and use our fields. I would love for us to be able to just tell them, come get their stuff. And, but I think it's their shed too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't, I, I believe that it, it was, we allowed them to put a shed there. Also, they got their stuff in it. It got broke into last year, the year before. Um, it would be something I'd like to get off our property if, Everyone was okay with that. I mean, they're not using our stuff anymore. They're not really using our fields, but they have a storage bin. You and I can have a conversation okay. on that. All right. That's all I got, unless you have anything else. No. I think the conclusion on this is that we need to hear more from. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll reach out to them. We'll, we'll get in touch with them, and then we will, uh, we'll be back in two weeks. So. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that ends the business. Uh, we don't have anybody appearing before council. We're going to staff and council report. Uh, we're going to take it out of order and pick on parks and recs right away. <laughs> I'll make this short and sweet. I don't have anything. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Economic development. <clears throat> no report tonight. Thank you. Fire department. No report. Thank you, ma'am. Police department. No report. Thank you. Streets. No report, thank you. Building maintenance? No report, ma'am, thank you. Law director? No, ma'am, thank you. City manager? I have nothing. <coughs> I would say thank you to staff for hanging in there for a late one. We appreciate it. Mayor? I have no report, thank you. Clerk of Council? I have nothing, thank you. Mr. Burchett? No report, thank you. Mr. Dougherty? No report, thanks. Mr. Miller? Nothing further, thank you. Ms. Witt? Amy, have a good week in training. <coughs> That's all. Mrs. Allen? Let's go home. No report. <laughs> okay, well, I agree with Mrs. Allen, so let's uh, end this meeting at 833. Okay. Don't you have a birthday tomorrow? Happy birthday. I didn't catch it.